uh, on entrepreneurship development in processing fodder and allied crops and this uh, online lecture series is being organized by agri business incubation center icar indian grassland and fodder research institute jhasi in collaboration with indian society of agricultural engineer new delhi and range management society of india jhasi so in this lecture series till now uh, already four lectures have been delivered and uh, that lecture uh, was uh, on entrepreneurship opportunity in feed and fodder sector and prospect of bamboo shoot processing and value addition and emerging startup and third lecture was on community led range land revival and management in cpr setup and lecture lecture 4 was on hydroponics and aeroponics a new vista in agri entrepreneurship now this is the time for lecture 5 and lecture 6 and lecture 5 on current status of agro food robotics and artificial intelligence which will be delivered by dr punit mishra and lecture 6 will be delivered by Uh, dr sivadhar on prospects of entrepreneurship uh, from rural and urban waste so before inviting today's speaker i would like to give a uh, brief about dr punit misra dr punit misra is a senior scientist in non destructive sensing and agro food robotics at wegnikan university and research the netherlands his research is focused on implementation of advanced spectroscopic uh, sensing technique and chemometric methodologies for rapid monitoring of food processes and products properties in 2019 he obtained uh, his phd in process anal uh, analytical and technologies from center for process analytics and control technology glasgow united kingdom he received many prestigious award such as malcolm award young scientist award from european food society authority parma italy young chemometrician award from french chemometric society and he has published more than 70 scientific peer reviewed articles so i welcome you sir into this online lecture series now i will invite dr punit misra for delivering his lecture Dr. Misra, sir, please. Yes, thank you very much for introducing me. Uh, so, the topic of this uh, presentation is going to be on agro-food robotics, which is basically has to do with how we can manipulate, for example, agriculture produce processes in an automated way, and with the use of basically sensors, actuators, and and artificial intelligence. So, these are the three components that. basically are uh, the backbone of agro food robotics so and in this one i think what i am going to present to you is an overview of what is the current status of this uh, agro food robotics in general uh, because the institute i am from wageningen is actually uh, basically the world's top institute working in this area in this topic and we have developed lot of applications lot of real scenarios real cases where you can really see how this technology for example agro food robotics is really being useful especially for different tasks along the food uh, chain basically and and it's not only limited to food but since you are from also from fodder research institute so it's also basically there are application in that area as well so moving forward just a small background of me so you know about my uh professional background but this is my general background so i am actually from a place called nainital uh in 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 uttarakhand and i did my bachelor in agricultural engineering in 2013 i am pass out from pantnagar university so i think you are also aware of that uh and after that i did my other studies in uh, in spain for example masters in agro engineering in madrid and then i did a psc in pure and applied chemistry in uh, in cpac in uk in scotland the things i do are spectroscopy sensing analytical chemistry also mechatronics because i build this kind of machines also now and also a, a type of statistics which is called chemometrics 
this is a type of statistics that you normally do with chemical data. So that's also my specialty. And then based on the recent trend, I also learn a lot of deep learning and, uh, and yeah, I implement that as well. Okay, so going to the motivation behind agri-food robotics. So this may not directly apply to Indian situation, but you can actually relate it somehow. So the first statement that I have from my yeah, in my presentation is that if you if you see the status of, for example, around the world, so you see that especially in Japan, uh, they are actually two thirds of farmers are actually of age 60 plus. So there is definitely a lack of young labor, uh, young people who are entering in this area of doing agriculture. In China, it is also expected that around 5% of the population uh, that is in, uh, in 2042 will also be actually uh, mainly contributed by older peoples and, and, and there will even be shortage of people there as well. And, and in this plot, what I show you uh, as a mark, uh, you see that how, for example, the number of people that was working in agriculture is continuously decreasing along the time. So you see here example of, for example, European countries like England, Netherlands, Italy, France, and Poland. So you see that in 1400s, for example, that's about year 1400, there were almost 60 to 80% of people they were doing agriculture. Uh, that was the main uh, occupation that were, people were interested in. And then after industrial revolution, basically the people have declined. The number of people who are doing agriculture have declined a lot. And now you see that in Europe, especially, it's only 10% maximum that people are actually into agricultural applications or doing some kind of producing of really the crops and things like that. So the main problem is that, in especially in Europe, is that their population is, is going down. The number of people interested in doing agriculture is going down. They are being attracted by more other industries like computer science, maybe, or IT, things like that. And the other problem is that uh, they are aging as well. So the young population is, is less compared to the older population. And, and that's also the motivation. And that's why in Europe, what is happening is that they are sourcing a lot of labor from, uh, from other poor countries in, in Eastern Europe, for example, Bulgaria or, or Romania, for example. And they are coming to do agriculture in, in Netherlands or in, in, in England, for example, or other European countries which are in the, in the central of Europe, basically. So here you see that why actually is now uh, in, in Europe, it's very important that they spend a lot of resources to actually automate, for example, a lot of things that has to do with agriculture because of the population, because of the age of the population, and also the shortage of labor, basically. So they are struggling with this kind of problem. And, and that's why there has been a lot of developments in this area in Europe, uh, especially. And apart from that, uh, there is also other problems like recently what we see like COVID-19, for example, and especially when this COVID-19 happened in Europe, there was actually a very large shortage of people who can actually work in this kind of application. So, so uh, we also realized that in that kind of situation, we really need automated solution which can really work any, any, in, in any kind of problems, for example, like COVID uh, and when there's severe lockdown. Then in Europe, there were other things that happened like Brexit, for example. So UK was get separated from, uh, from Europe. And then there was also again a shortage of labor because in, in UK, I think there were a lot of, almost 50% of labor was actually European. So when this happened, this Brexit, so they actually uh, had no, nothing else to do instead of investing in automation basically. And then, then there are really the big challenges like climate change and biodiversity collapse. So you have to deal with this kind of problem as well. Uh, to yeah, to really solve uh, and, and manage the agriculture in a proper way. But that's just the motivation, uh, what I showed you. So uh, these are also some points. So, so I think before uh, we were actually competing with nature, for example, uh, in, in doing agriculture, but the, the main motivation behind agri-food robotics is also to partner with nature, for example. And we were also doing things which were actually disturbing to soils and we want to do protect soil, for example, now, and that's mainly because to deal with this climate change and biodiversity collapse uh, kind of situations. And yeah, so, so that's just a motivation uh, to start with uh, the real status of agri-food robotics. And, and this is also uh, a graph that I show to you is that what 
actually is the background of agri-food robotics, for example, if I, if I, if I give the mark here. So we, have, we are active mainly in doing things like doing vision, for example, trying to see things uh, in an automated way. And, and we use that information to really control or do actions with actuators or machines. We do learning, for example, we try to make new type of model, for example, if you want to do some kind of actuation in a field, we want to detect and learn a model that can actually identify a particular type of crop, for example. We also do analysis of different wavelengths of light, for example, to study more than uh, just colors of, of your samples, and we develop robotic systems. And how we, which area we are active in is, is mainly we are trying to help in, in things like breeding. So it's, it's breeding of plants, maybe crops, uh, also like breeding of animals. So we do a lot area application in that area. We try to build circular agri-food systems, for example. So we, we do a lot of things in, in that area as well, like IoT and, and things like that. We are also very much active in enhanced free production. So we like to reduce uh, like people, for example, trying to do the harvest. So we like to do that hands free. So for example, if you have a tree full of fruits, we like to actually pluck the fruits from the tree in an automated way. And so that people don't have to really do that. Uh, and then we also interested in actually doing an objective assessment of the quality of the things that we really harvest from uh, any kind of uh, production, for example, either tree or, or, or field of crops. And then we also deal with ethics and, and, and uptake of ecosystem of this type of technologies. For example, there is also a, a thing which is normally uh, become ethical is that how much thing uh, a robot can actually do for us uh, instead of uh, basically replacing totally the humans. So, so we are also active in that area and, and doing more dialogue and discussion in that area actually in global level. Uh, so that's again uh, some areas that we are in, uh, we are active in. But now, what I like to show you is is actually first uh, a general uh, video from our yeah our group basically, which will actually give you a summary of things that we are doing in the area of agro food robotics. So I put the volume low and. Uh, Oops, it's uh, going fast. Yeah, I'm just trying to remove this blue line from this. I don't know how to do that. Avoid this. Okay. Okay, so this is the video in which uh, we summarized. Actually, we made this video very recently to give people actually an overview of the things we are working on. So we are actually active in different areas of robotics, starting from uh, fields or even before fields, so basically breeding of seeds and things like that we are active in. So you see, we also work with fish, pork, for example, with animals and doing things with packaging and processing of products in an automated way. So all the application that you see in this video is actually developed by us uh, in, in Wageningen. And, uh, and drone, for example, is very much getting attention in India as well nowadays. I'm seeing some news in that area. So we are active also in doing drones and then all this actuation manipulation of the crops, for example, in the fields. We have been doing that from many years now. So also like, for example, assessment of crops in the fields uh, in an automated way. And then in Netherlands, there is a very big market of uh, greenhouses. So the, a lot of cultivation is actually indoor. So we are doing a lot of indoor robotics, for example, this machine to harvest, for example, peppers or flowers, for example, and also drones inside to scan your crops, which are in the greenhouse. Also, yeah, aquaphonics, I think, when you grow crops in, in water, basically multiple levels, that's actually also very interesting nowadays. And then selective uh, fertilization and then automation sampling from plants or doing some genetic analysis of plants. 
for phenotyping purposes, for example. So this is also, we also do robots, for example, for more application like gardening. So doing, for example, the garden uh, management and also, yeah, so this is a lot of things we are basically doing. So we also analyze quality of produce, for example, by spectral imaging, it's a technique. And also quality of flowers, again, with uh, the different type of techniques. Also, we do a lot with flowers because, because in Netherlands, they are a lot more active in flowers. I don't know if you know tulip flowers. These are very common in Netherlands and they have a very big market of that area as well. But apart from tulip, there are also roses, for example, uh, that we have to deal with and, uh, and it's very active area as well of research. Okay, and uh, then the next slide is also a, a video which gives you some introduction about the proper systems that we have developed, for example, for doing different tasks. So these are different things that we do, for example, automated robots to do uh, basically navigation in the fields without any human intervention. We do handling of flowers, as you see here. So there's a very big industry of flower here in Netherlands, and we do a lot of export and import of flowers for that. So we need automation in that area as well. Then also this planting of seeds, seedling imaging, basically how the seeds are. And then we also do things like in poultry, so like uh, picking up eggs, for example, from your barns automatically with the robot. So it collects the eggs uh, in the middle of chickens there. We also have things like for doing automated weeding. So we identify weeds in the field by special techniques and then we apply, for example, any kind of actuation or, or treatment like laser treatments to them to kill them, kill the weed basically. A lot of indoor applications also for greenhouse uh, areas. And, uh, and this one you already saw, so this is a machine to really do sampling from your plants to, to really analyze them and prepare the sample for their chemical analysis in the labs. These are also machines which uh, are made for yeah, handling with, uh, with the orchards where you are normally dealing with fruits. And then some machines for, I think, harvesting asparagus crops which is like a long uh, long <coughs> and then this machine is actually very popular when you search our institute it's a machine to do harvesting of peppers when they are ripe in, inside a greenhouse um, and it's it's yeah it's used very uh, commonly in the, in different greenhouses in bargaining and okay yeah, there are so many things in this slide. I will should pause and talk about each maybe. Yeah, so I think what you see here is uh, what I'm trying to show you is that we are doing robotics uh, in all areas of agriculture. So starting from in the field, for example, when you have to manipulate crops, uh, with tractors so what we are doing in that area is actually doing automation of like this this machine so you see there's no driver in this and it's being driven without any driver uh, uh, it's actually able to do all kind of operation in the fields uh, and you don't need a driver and sometimes you also have machines for example in the second video that i am showing now like this this video so in this machine what is happening is that you have driver in one of the truck tractor but in the other tractor, there is no driver. So this is actually just doing the same operation as this machine and trying to follow the, the things that this machine is doing and, and, and trying to copy. So here we are not doing fully automation, but we have actually a machine that is actually doing the exactly same thing as the other machine. So, uh, and then in, uh, in other video, what is here below is, yeah, so this is also a, a robot that actually maps your orchard. For example, where are different trees and, and how is the symmetry of your orchard? So it actually maps that. It uses the LiDAR technology, which is based on laser imaging. And, and it can actually give you a clear indication of your orchard and, and how the things are there in your orchard, for example. 
the last machine is i think kind of a mover and that you have to uh, do like in your in your in your fields you have to do moving to cut the the grass there so it is actually an automated mover so actually the driver is not there they have changed the driver with a computer so they can still do this kind of operation pretty easily with this machine and, and automation okay so this was the part of uh, field i think uh, and then the next part yeah, the next part is again machines uh, that we do in uh, for automated uh, harvesting of some things and also automated analysis of uh, some different products. For example, what you see on uh, on on this on this side, basically the right side is is a machine that is for harvesting this broccoli. So it can broccoli is kind of a cauliflower kind of uh, just green so this machine actually identify this broccoli and then it actually harvest it in the field and uh, and if it's done by humans it's a bit of time consuming task uh, you see it also damaging broccoli sometime but they have improved i think now the machine that it's it does not damage the product like this but this is more the experimental video i think that when this machine was very new and as i and if i know well this machine is now being used in us in different uh, different fields different farmers they use it continuously now to harvest broccoli in the fields and one of the main challenge with this project we had is that when you have a lot of uh, uh, for example the leaves uh, on in, on a on a crop then this leaves actually is is hides the the broccoli from the top so you cannot really see where is the broccoli because it is hidden behind different leaves and uh, and what we have done is we have used ai for that to really to really identify broccoli even if it's hidden by the leaves from the top uh, up to a certain percent for example so that's area we have been active in i think the other machine is just to harvest asparagus so it's also automated although there is a human which is uh, initially doing some manipulation with it but but this is actually some things that we have uh, been researching on but these videos are also old, so now they have been uh, really, these machines are, are now commercially in market as well. Okay, uh, let's move on. This one, I think you already saw, this is also, this is a machine to do harvesting. No, I think it's a machine to kill weeds in the field uh, somehow, but it does automatically. And I see that my screen is somehow, it's, is blocked. Meet the Stake Day okay. IC. It's a brilliantly clever Dutch design developed. I will maybe make it a bit. With the expert help of the Wageningen University, the machine is packed with the latest innovations to make any farmer's dream come true. The IC is all you'll ever need when it comes to weeding your field. Powerful LED lamps establish a constant level of light under any circumstances during the daytime or at night. Where in the onboard computer creates a whole different image. It makes the perfect distinction between crop and weeds. The IC distinguishes different colors of the crop, ranging from yellow to purple. And within a nanosecond after analyzing the images, the weeding blades will know exactly what. The IC is tough on weeds, but goes soft on your plants. While cutting weeds, the IC with a puff of air gently blows off the sand that has fallen onto the plants. A unique feature indeed. Uneven terrain will of course have an impact on the amount of space between the camera and the ground. The IC, however, stays level at all times with a tolerance of even a few millimeters. IC works independently from the tractor when it comes to steering and leveling on a field. Now, before I can Yes, so yeah, I think you have some insights and now this can be skipped. Yeah. Again, I think there are different machines. So we are also aiming to build actually machines, not only specific to a particular type of problem, but which can actually be used for different types of crops. For example, the same machine which can harvest a, a pumpkin and a turnip and a cabbage, for example. So we are interested in building generalized robotic system as well, which can apply to different type of uh, problems. And here is an example, actually, this machine in which we worked. And this machine is capable of harvesting different types of uh, uh, 
yeah the, the the vegetables for example so it can do also the mapping of your fields for example how was the the growth and also the level of uh, the weeds in your field so while it actually moves and yeah so th so this is also an innovation in this area we are working on so mainly developing machine generalized to different types of vegetables or, or different types of crops for example and yeah and this video let's see what it is yeah so this is more about drone uh, imaging the things that we are doing in the area of drone imaging of fields for example and it can be for crops or, or it can also be for orchards for example so we also use it actually for a lot of landscape monitoring and also for city monitoring i think from the top so how the things are changing a long time in a particular area Okay. So here we are doing mainly for uh, plant phenotyping, for example, to see uh, the breeding of uh, crops so or plants. So we use it uh, to actually measure the whole field. And we have different types of cameras, uh, yeah, RGB, multispectral, NDVI, and yeah, and we have also our own uh, field facilities to do uh, this. deep learning and AI to, uh, to do identification of uh, crops or, or the status of crops, for example. Here we can also identify the height of crop, for example, by this kind of uh, LiDAR imaging in your drone. And then it's all about data processing. So if you, with this type of technology, it's, it's the main thing is also data analysis and, and processing of data, how you can really uh, implement this technology in practice. Okay, and so now what I have shown you until this slide is that how we were doing automation and robotics, for example, in the area of open field. So you see that I showed you tractors working in the field and then drone also doing things in the, in the field. But now what I will show you is things that we are doing basically in, in for example, in laboratory controlled environments or greenhouses. <laughs> because there is also a lot of automation there and uh, and that's very important from uh, from the perspective of Netherlands because there are a lot of greenhouses and a lot of agriculture going on actually inside in indoor environments here so and uh, this particular machine is actually for doing breeding uh, operations for your plants so we actually have different seedlings and it's very important to actually in breeding experiments is to is to know the shape and size of for example of the leaves and and yeah and you are very interested in that and you have to do it on a lot of different genotypes uh, for example and then if you have number of treatments uh, even more then you actually multiply a number of genotypes times number of multiple number of treatments and then number of crops that you want to do basically so so we have this machine basically to do in real time the 3d analysis of plants so this is also a robotics type of application and it then sorts the plants in different categories for example if it's if it's very big if it's small they are going to different categories of uh, their their yeah their, which we have defined basically in beforehand and then you have actually automation that manipulates this cuttings and uh, and you can then basically do whatever you like with this cutting you can uh, you can sell them also if it's not the breeding experiment, but more about selling the cuttings to uh, to the to the farmers, for example. This is also possible after doing their sorting of cutting. Yeah, after the after sorting. This is again a bit more sophisticated video of the same machine, so it's it's going much more deeper because you are now actually analyzing also. Uh, you are more interested in analyzing what is the chemistry of these cuttings. I don't know, secondary metabolites, for example, you are interested in, to, in, in knowing about these cuttings because you have given some treatment to them and you, are, you want to see how they behave, for example, for a particular, it, it can be a nutritional for the cuttings, or it can even be something that really uh, kills wheat, for example. So herbicides or weedicides, you normally test that and, and you see how the plant actually uh, respond to that. 
yeah so this machine yeah it, it, it does automatic cleaning and it's fully automated basically so uh, to do sampling of plants uh, which cuts the loss of uh, with more than 30 percent about what it normally does we should be elected for the green tech innovation and this is a machine which does automatic seedling for you so you it can plant and software and machinery at iso group that makes the iso cutting and planting 1800 machine a unique machine which improves speed quality and working conditions for every potrose grower yeah so what this machine was yes. about is to uh, really cuts really cut the cutting and then it also plants in the pots so that's uh that's actually one step to really, uh, that can that can be replaced by machine and not by human. So otherwise, human has to do one by one all the cutting. Uh, Doctor Puneet, Doctor Puneet. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, you are little uh, increase your voice. It's not proper audible okay. here. Okay, I will increase. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Now it's better. Now it's okay or still more? Still more. Okay, <laughs> then it might because be then, because there are <laughs> because there are comments from chat box. Others also facing this. Okay, but I think this is the maximum I can go. Otherwise, okay, that that's okay. fine. We can manage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start again. So, so as I showed you before, I showed you some automated systems, but normally we have to actually also train the system and 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 there are different ways to train them for example here my colleague is training for example this robotic arm how to pluck from a tree like a fruit for example so he he trained it and this robot has a camera on it which actually follows the movement which my colleague is doing and then uh, what you see in the video below here which i am running now is basically the robot is able to now detect the fruit on the tree and and is able to pluck it from it so that's actually we call learning by demonstration so this this approach so we demonstrate to the robot how to do things and then it is able to learn it and then it's able to do it itself so that's what we are doing and that's the, actually the artificial intelligence, what we call normally. So that is uh, what you see in action here. What we also do is we actually also follow nowadays with the movements of people that they are doing in, uh, for example, in sorting houses. So they have to do here in this case of uh, oranges, they have to sort on the oranges and, and do not have, for example, the leaves of, uh, uh, of the orange. So they are doing it manually, but this can actually also be replaced easily by a robot by basically training the robot, all this uh, movements that you are seeing and being tracked by the algorithm that we have. So that's also possible. Uh, and now going more uh, to greenhouse. So we do also actually automation and robotics in inside the, for example, sorting as you see before. And, and we also have worked on this machine, which actually sort for you different cuttings, for example, in, in their proper order. And it actually helps you to uh, yeah, to do uh, later the packaging of them and, uh, and their sorting as well. And we have found it that doing this thing is not really damaging them. So you can also think that if you do such many mechanical operation on the sensitive uh, leaves, they can actually suffer damage but we have find out that with the spatial, uh, this uh, manipulators that we have, uh, the cuttings uh, are still healthy and can be planted. So you can see here that uh, those cuttings were first sorted by the machine, then they were planted on this, uh, the spots. And then the human is actually only just checking that at the end of uh, all the process. Uh, and apart from that, this is a machine that we were working on uh, to actually harvest roses, for example, in, in your in your uh, in your greenhouses. So, so we have a lot of uh, cultivation of flowers in, in Netherlands, uh, and this machine basically is for detecting a rose, and then yeah, basically by operation it cuts the rose to take it from uh, yeah. So what do you see? It has taken a rose, and then it's actually put it back. Uh, in its uh, storage of the machine. Yeah, it's uh, some things are very uh, not directly really applicable to our Indian scenarios, but yeah, it's just to be aware that what is uh, happening all around the world and uh, the automation and things like that, and what can be the opportunities for us in India to really translate this kind of technologies. 
operates completely in. Yeah, so this is also a, also a video which uh, is about uh, the machine which I showed you in the starting. So the pen and also this distance sensors which can actually detect a pepper. Localization and maturity classification. Peppers are scanned by looking slightly upwards. By observing the bottom part of the pepper, maturity can easily be detected. Upwards. The image reached the peduncle of the peppers on target. Multiple robots and trolleys. A conveyor belt will be added to the robot in order to convey harvested peppers to a standard pepper trolley. Multiple robots and trolleys will be part of a fully automated post-harvest logistics management system. Great. Yeah, so this system is also very futuristic and it's mainly for uh, greenhouses. So it's for indoor conditions and it's also for peppers basically. But we, this machine is actually work. It works, and I have it. This machine in my other lab as well. So it's a uh, it's really useful, uh, uh, yeah, tool, and it's also very good to demonstrate <coughs> people are here. Okay, the next one is again. Yeah, we do a lot of imaging of tomatoes because in Netherlands they do a lot of cultivation of tomatoes and indoor, and especially with this aqua aquaphonics, I think, or hydrophonics, uh, yeah, we call it. So they do a lot of that, and, and then they want to know when they are ready, ready for harvest and inside. So we use, uh, for example, imaging to see when the tomatoes are ready or not inside your uh, greenhouses, for example, to harvest. And this can this robot can go automatically scanning all the, all the greenhouse. And the greenhouse here are actually very big, so you cannot go do yourself as a human. They are really very big greenhouses. I will say, uh, yeah. Uh, 600 meters or something like that. So they are really big. Uh, and then this machine actually goes and scan uh, the whole greenhouse and, and, and tells you that where are the locations where you can harvest, for example, at, at first point. Apart from that, uh, yeah, this is also a machine to, uh, to do uh, harvesting of flowers, for example. So it goes in, in again in, in indoor situations, identify flowers and, and their readiness level, for example, to do the harvest. And yeah, so that's that's the main principle behind this machine, actually. Uh, this is yeah the same machine. Uh, I had two videos, but I think we don't need it because of the time. Uh, I see that I should move forward. But it's the same machine applied to different flowers. It can detect if the flower is ready or not to harvest, for example. Then, yeah, it's, it's the same video again running. And then we also do indoor, for example, imaging from top of the, the plants. So if you have a lot of plants in the, in the greenhouse, you can also scan from the top, like the whole field in an automated way and, and get a lot of information about them. So we use, for example, I think fluorescence uh, sensors here and hyperspectral sensors to really measure how the plants are functioning, for example, their photosynthetic activity uh, inside this greenhouse. So we can have really control on everything. We can manipulate a lot of things, a lot of parameters like temperature, humidity inside this uh, greenhouse by the use of uh, the sensors in real time. Okay, and yeah, here is an example of the sensor, how they can detect also if there is any disease uh, is progressing inside uh, in your greenhouse on, on your plants. Yeah, we have also robots that do gardening, for example, they, they navigate in your garden and do cutting off your crop, like the your grasses that you are in gardens, for example. So, but this is an example of that. Uh, yeah, we also Chemical. do uh, disease Product. detection, for example. It's on integrated pest management. Uh, we are working on an holistic approach to do environmental friendly uh, pest management. And we are working in three use case crops in vineyards, apple orchards, and carrot fields. Mm -hmm. And what is Wageningen's role in this? 
Now, we are responsible for developing the early detection system. It's an early disease detection system, which detects the several diseases in the crops. And how will it object that goal? Well, we are developing uh, uh, techniques uh, based on machine vision, uh, using color cameras, uh, using uh, spectral cameras. Uh, and we apply uh, deep learning techniques to do disease specification. Tim, you built the hardware and software for this smart camera system. So can you tell us a little bit more about its technical details? Here you see the early detection system. It's connected to the decision support system through the 4G antenna which also receives the GPS signal we use for localization. We know where the camera is when it takes an image. And it's a smart camera, so it doesn't only take the images, but it also processes them. And then uh, we have the final result, the decision in this case, is there a disease or not, which is sent up to the cloud for further processing. Hello, Peter. The smart camera uses a deep learning algorithm and you have fine-tuned this algorithm. So how does it work? Yeah, so we started collecting images from the three diseases in the field. And on these images, we trained a deep learning algorithm. And the deep learning algorithm is actually a object detection algorithm, basically meaning that if it's an image is presented to that algorithm, it can determine whether there is a disease and where it's located in the image. And with that information, we can uh, process uh, a task map and we can load that task map on the spot sprayer. And with the spot sprayer, we can apply the right dose of plant protection products at the right location and at the right time. Joseph, during the project, you employed several cameras. Why is that? Yeah, so that's video I can also skip. I think you got already the idea about what we are doing. So we were actually doing imaging to detect basically disease in plants and then by knowing that we can apply at, at the location the spraying for example so we can do vd sites at the same location and in that way we save the environment because we use less kind of chemicals there okay so i think uh, now should be oh, yeah we also do a lot of things with this this new technology called polo lens so this polo lens is like something to do with virtual reality so what we do with this is that we normally people have to go inside, for example, in this uh, greenhouses and they have to give a scores manually. But now they can use this HoloLens, for example, to really do things in a, in a hands-free way and just with the use of barcodes, for example. Yeah, but what is the main message here is that you can use this technology to really record uh, all the things that you are doing or, uh, without any pencil or pens and without your hands are still free. So you can actually do a lot of uh, things just by speaking to it and, and by the imaging that the camera have on this technology. So uh, that's also interesting actually. And it actually can also measure NDVI. So if you are aware of NDVI, which actually is very much related to the photosynthetic activity of crops, for example, uh, for example, chlorophyll content. Uh, so it can take NDVI images and then, then it gives you more information as well. So that's it. I think for this one, uh, yeah, it's going back again. Yeah, this one, maybe I can skip. Face face with that. So this robot is actually to uh, to trim your grasses. Like if you have bushes in your gardens, long bushes. So this robot is actually to trim those uh, bushes or, or, or your flowers, for example. So it can do a lot of things uh, in that area. I'm not sure where was it, uh, the nice picture for that. Yeah, what well, this, this is we call trim bot. So it's for trimming your grasses or your bushes, for example. And moving ahead, yes, yeah, we also do things like sorting, for example, this machine is for sorting potatoes. So this can actually scan uh, 10,000 potatoes per hour uh, with a very fast speed. 
and it has actually 3D imaging on it. So it has cameras basically on this ring from each side. So that's why it can reconstruct the whole shape of your potatoes. So you can think that this can actually be applied to all kind of uh, sorting scenarios where you have to measure the volume of something because you can measure it from the whole, all the sides. Uh, yeah, this is the same. And then we also work a lot in uh, analyzing, for example, how the fish and, and the biodiversity of sea is. For example, here you see is that we are measuring in, in a ship in a sea and in, in with real time deep learning, we are detecting and counting how many fish are of particular type, for example. So, and that is very important because when you go for fishing here in Netherlands, then you have to document how many fish you have catch from a particular type of, uh, yeah, of type of variety. So, so and, and that's what we call fully documented fishery because by using this technique, you can document really how many fish you have catch from a particular location in the sea. So, and that's very important for biodiversity because you don't want to catch too many fish from the same location. So, so this is what we also do. This is also something in AI, we do a lot of AI because this is something to do with deep learning of images because when we do imaging in the sea, then the environment there is humid and, and you can have basically your lens of the camera is getting blurred. So we do AI for that actually deep blurring of the lenses. So here we are putting water on the lens of our camera and it's getting blurred. But with the help of AI, we are actually reducing the blur. So, so that's why we can now use this camera also in the sea in the real time in the ship. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is example of monitoring also the bed of the sea. So the sea bed has different creatures. So you, if you want to monitor biodiversity, you can also monitor the bed of the sea, for example, with imaging. So we are here detecting what this different creature in the sea bed, for example, with the, with the help of uh, deep learning and AI. So, so this is also what we are doing uh, in, in area of sea and, and yeah, marine research, basically. And then, yeah, then moving to, so until now I have showed you manipulation, cutting, cropping, and, and, and things like with marine research, but we also do a lot of research in the area of post harvest, for example. So this is uh, the lab where I am actually now sitting. So this is actually my lab. And, uh, and in this lab, this video will tell you what things we do in area of post harvest research already. So I will start this video. Okay, so this was our post harvest facilities. I think this video is from three years ago, but now we have more things here actually in the lab. Some new uh, research topics, also new projects. So we have actually uh, are doing something new as well, apart from this video actually. Then uh, I also tell you something about things like uh, what we do with in terms of quality analysis. For example, uh, we also develop things like uh, spectrometers and their applications to analyze fruits, for example, to take decisions about their harvest or, or their storage, or also their ready to eat level, for example. So here I show you as the use of this uh, spectrometer Felix, which is from US and, uh, and we develop application basically for peer to predict uh, in, in real time, the soluble solids content 
and and dry matter so so that's what we do we also do a, a things in the area of dairy because we have a, a dairy campus as well in Wageningen so I, I miss some videos of dairy but if you are interested we can I can also share some more information we have dairy campus as well here so and we have actually one of the biggest uh, milk uh, industry called Campina and uh, yeah they do a lot of milk in in this uh, in Netherlands but what I should like to show you is that we actually did some applications of some this miniature spectrometer to predict in real time the fat content and protein content in milk uh, and it was pretty precise and if I if I remember then the error that we got was actually the the error that actually is uh, is highlighted by ICAR uh, like uh, I think NDRI NDRI they, they have a level of error of a technology that you can use and it was actually lower than that so this technology is pretty useful if you really want to use it in practice as well. Uh, we also do things analysis of fruits by basically measuring their doing their spectroscopy and also measuring their sound, for example, to try to predict their, their firmness level because in some producers, it's very important to measure uh, the firmness of the fruit rather than uh, really the dry matter or soluble solids uh, between avocados and mangoes. And we also built, for example, this type of machine, which actually tells you uh, in real time, for example, what is the dry matter, soluble solids content of your fruit or any produce is. So I have a video in this uh, next slide where we actually analyzed fruits, uh, kiwi fruits that come to us from New Zealand. Uh, and yeah, so with this machine, we just need to really put the box there and then uh, you close it. And then my colleague will just do a scan of it, uh, we'll take an image. Uh, and this is not a color image, but it's more like a spectral image. So it's doing actually chemical imaging. And then you can predict for each fruit, what is the soluble solids content in it, like bricks value of it. And, uh, and then you can save it in, the, in your Excel files, for example. And this take less than 40 seconds. And before we have to do actually cutting of the fruit and then take the juice out of it. But now it can be done with this machine with just a scan. And, and this is actually the machine that I built totally myself, all the hardware, all the software. So that's why I always show this machine to people. And, and I'm still building it uh, more because I like to add it add more fruits in it so, so that it can be used for all type of fruits, basically all the common fruits. And yeah. And then we also do a lot of phenotyping application like uh, monitoring plants for different treatments, different genotypes. Uh, this is also what I do uh, also in my research. So we have facilities where you can have these plants, a lot of them growing in a condition then being monitored by imaging, for example, their shape, number of leaves, and also different chemical parameters in them like pigments, for example, or their photosynthetic activity. So, so that's, yeah, the plant basically goes there every day and, uh, and they then go back after receiving the nutrition, for example, the water and right amount of uh, their, their nutrition. And then, uh, yeah, basically they go back uh, after this uh, type of imaging. Okay. Yeah, I think there are a lot of things that I can show you, but uh, in one hour, I think uh, I would like to finish here. And uh, as you have seen that, uh, there are immense potential in the sensing automation and robotics. And, and when you say about entrepreneurship, I see actually that all these techniques and, and things, they are not really in India, especially in, in multiple areas. Uh, but what I see is that there is a lot of possibilities to really adopt these techniques, which are already developed, especially in Wageningen England to really to our Indian scenarios. And actually we are also very, very open for that. So uh, we, we have many times people visiting us from India actually to uh, advance in this areas, but I have never seen uh, really people who are expert in this area visiting us. They are mainly people who are coming uh, consultants or things like that, but really like engineers like you and, and researcher or scientists like you, I, I have not seen them visiting our Institute yet, but I definitely see if uh, that if you are really interested to come here and visit our facilities, it's also possible. And, uh, and we can also see opportunities, how things can advance from, uh, yeah. And, and, and we develop basically for Indian scenarios as well. Uh, apart from that, yeah, that's all I will say. Uh, I hope uh, 
I was able to give you in general the overview of the things uh, in, in, in the area of agrofood robotics, for example, that we are doing. Uh, yeah, so I think we can. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, Punit Kisraji. Yeah. Uh, actually, agriculture engineering have vast scope as it is proved by your uh, deliberation in this lecture. And yeah. I think uh, uh, we have uh, in this meeting, uh, some students are also joined. If they are having any query regarding artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, I request them to put their question either in the chat box or they can direct interact with Dr. Punit Misra. Any question, please? I see already some questions. Uh, maybe uh, some start. question is there in the chat box. Yeah. Can you please tell more about the broccoli harvesting robot? If it covered with leaves, how it is mapping? What is the gas diffusion thing in post harvest lab? From yeah. Sudipta Kumar Hajra. Yeah. So first one is the, the broccoli harvesting robot. So in broccoli, what I told you is that when you have a broccoli, then uh, yeah, it can be uh, it can be covered with leaf from the top, for example, this. Uh, but you at least have something visible from the top, so you will have maybe the partially the visibility of the broccoli, and then uh, you can actually do some kind of regeneration of the the scene. And in that scene, you actually are able to detect if there is broccoli or not. So so it's same as that. Uh, so it's same as like us, for example, if we with our own eyes go to a field. And we only see very small part of broccoli. We are still able to detect it because uh, we know how broccoli actually looks like. So even if it's half covered with the leaf, we are still able to see with our own eyes that if it's uh, yeah, this this could be broccoli and not a leaf. So the main challenge in that machine was that to actually measure the size of broccoli and not really to detect the broccoli. So because if you if your broccoli is covered with a leaf. It was difficult to really measure how big was the broccoli, because the what you see from the top can be the center of the broccoli only, or, or one side of the broccoli, and the, the the thing that we develop is to actually to remap uh, the whole size of broccoli uh, with the algorithm that we developed, and that algorithm is actually an algorithm which is commonly known as this generative deep learning models. So in that you normally uh, are training model to actually detect this kind of things. But there is also an article on that. Maybe you, if you search on internet, we have also published that article, which uh, is about broccoli harvester and, and basically about detection of broccoli. Uh, the second okay, question. Yes, second you... question, I think Dr. Bhaskar Gaikwad. He has written I capital in Indian, please. But uh, I don't understand what he was to tell. Then third question is, can you suggest the models and basic for development of NIR models using NIR respect to photometer from Dr. Radesh Pandey. Yeah, so suggest the model. So normally for NIR, uh, because the data is uh, highly collinear, uh, and collinear means that it has a lot of variables, but a lot of variables are actually correlated. So, so you don't have information on all the variables. So you have information only on limited number of variables. So for that, Normally, the, the method that people use is, is partial least square regression. And, and that method actually removes the collinearity in your data. So it actually reduces information which is repeated in the data uh, and only uses the information which is unique, for example. So just to remember, uh, I typed the name partial least square square regression. And this is, I think, the most general method that people use for NIR data modeling. But nowadays, you also have deep learning, AI, and things like that. But this method is, uh, is works very well, also general. Yeah. OK, sir. Third question is uh, someone, uh, Vijay, uh, Dr. Vijay, asking yeah. that uh, yeah. this uh, method is adopted by common farmers at the Netherlands. Yes, yes, that's the big thing uh, because they are used by common farmers. Uh, common farmers does not really program them, but they are in the greenhouses, for example, of common farmers. They are in the field of common farmers and they are really used. That's the difference. That's a very big difference, actually. Uh, 
uh, I think one question from Dr. Bhaskar Gaikwad. Collinearity is a data redundancy and remove that with PLSR for NIR data. I think he has given some comments. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. Very informative presentation. Thank you, Dr. Misra by Ravi Pratap Singh. And uh, I think there is no question, any kind of direct interaction. If uh, some students or any member want to contact uh, Dr. Puneet Misra, he may uh, contact. Or, uh, sir, uh, actually, in this presentation, I see my head of department, ex head of department, Dr. D.S. Rajput. This is an honor to me, sir. Uh, Dr. Rajput, can you comment for this session? Sir, up uh, unmute TJ up me up to. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are Hi. listening to you. It was very good presentation and I liked it. I think it is, uh, we can learn many things from this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope I am uh, able to contribute here. Yeah. Any more? Yes, yes Dr. Sahai. Uh, it is really nice to see Rajput sir and uh, we pay our regards to him from here. <laughs> in this presentation. Okay, if not any question, I invite uh, Dr. R.B. Kumar for his comments. Thank you, Dr. Patakji. Uh, it was a, a very good presentation and actually uh, from this presentation, uh, we can learn and we can, you can say that uh, plan for the future, how best we can also use some of the things uh, for our uh, field purpose, like we are using the drone Drone nowadays, uh, but uh, how best we can use other things our, in our field. So uh, it, is, it has given, uh, you can say that the, by seeing uh, Dr. Puneet Mishra's presentation, we can be able to have the different ideas. Although uh, whatever he has presented, uh, that is very difficult to be, uh, you can say that the, uh, implied on our field because that is the uh, high technical, uh, you can say the robot, robotics and that is not, uh, you can say that as such we can use, but some of the things or you can say that some of the idea uh, from that, uh, you can say the presentation can be well taken and that can be incorporated in our system and uh, that, that will be more, you can say the time saving as well as the manpower saving. So certainly it was a nice presentation and a lot of ideas can be taken uh, uh, for the future, uh, future program, particularly in agriculture crop as well as in the water crop right from sowing to harvesting even for value addition. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I invite Dr. A.K. Rai, project coordinator, forest crops, if he is here, sir. Dr. Rai. Okay, Dr. Sunil Tiwari, head of the department, GP division, sir. Yes, uh, it was very nice presentation, very interesting presentation. And uh, many things were uh, quite uh, interesting in the sense that many technologies being used and being uh, promoted in, in Europe and other advanced countries. But basic point lies here, as you mentioned, Dr. Misra, Dr. Punit Misra, that in, that in Europe and other country developed nations, the old age people are only means uh, engaged or interested. And the scenario is same here also in India. Younger generation is not interested much in agriculture uh, because of many things, but one, one most important thing is it's not that much remunerative. So it, it needs to be more, made more cost effective, means reduction in cost, uh, increasing profitability, value addition and post-harvest management. And in that scenario, technology will play a great role. But you know that 80% of the farm holders, small farm holders are there less than one acre or so. So the large chunk who are the small holders, they cannot afford such uh, technologies, although cluster-based farming may be of integrated farming system modules or other modules. So my question is that whether what, what future you see, cost reduction in all those technologies, 
which can be applicable to countries like India and Asia and Southeast Asia. What is your opinion, Dr. Mishra? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think these technologies are costly in Europe because they are made here, and here it takes a lot of money to for labor, for example, to for people and resources, for example. But in India, I think if you make the same technology in India, it will already be. Ten times cheaper uh, from what we are costing, what it costs here basically, and then it has to do a lot actually with uh, not really that the small farmer can buy these things, but actually providing them this thing as a service. For example, for example, there can be a big. Doctor uh... Sahar, please. Yeah, so, so what I see is, uh, yeah, so cost reduction can be done a lot if it's really these technologies are being adopted by our Indian uh, technique companies, for example, that already uh, a big cost reduction there. But then uh, we don't have to also sell this technique directly to small farmers, but we have to maybe manage or do something with, uh, for example, uh, providing them this as a service, as, as a role, as a role of an institute or, or, or a scheme of a government. But this cannot be directly sold to uh, small farmers. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Puneet. Okay. I think at last, uh, my question is, can we identify some of the area to collaborate with your university? Yeah, it's, 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 it's normally can be done. But I think for that, we, will, we may need a different meeting. Uh, but it's it's common to uh, to have collaboration, uh, especially in this area of agriculture and uh, and automation, and not even automation, but mainly also agriculture in general, like uh, post harvest, for example, of crops. Uh, yeah. That's also very much feasible. Uh, but I have to identify the right people for that. Uh, and uh, from your side, you have to identify the right people to be in the meeting. And that's possible. Uh, we do collaboration with, uh, there is this institute in, in Hyderabad, I think. Uh, mm, it's uh, I, <coughs> International uh, Rice. Okay, just, in, International. Okay. Yeah. It's Ikrisat. Ikrisat. Ikrisat, yeah. Ikrisat, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have some context there. But um, yeah, if it's, uh, you have some areas, we can really have a meeting and... Uh, and discuss for collaboration in general, or also you can visit here us and see the facility in, in practice, for example. So it's also normally possible, so. Okay, sir. I think uh, in this session, Dr. Ravi Pratap Singh is also joined. Uh, is there Ravi Pratap Singh? Okay. 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 I think the use of robotics is coming up in uh, processing technology in uh, our situation also. It may not be the right now possible to directly go in, into the field, but uh, it is coming up in a nice way in plucking industry and uh, uh, some robots are made for tea plucking also. Mm. And that uh, same kind of uh, robots may be used well for uh, harvesting green fodder also, if they are applied. They are a little costly, but uh, with the passage of time and increasing of demand, it may come up in fodder also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amit, uh, our doctor, director has joined or not? Or Dr. Ekera? Okay. Oh, sir, director. Director, sir, is not there. Okay, then thank you, Dr. Puneet Misra from our side. And I request you to join the next lecture from Dr. Sivadhar Misra. I invite Dr. Sivadhar from IARI, he is principal scientist in agronomy division, and uh, his uh, topic uh, is uh, waste management. I think Dr. Siva, the... please share your slides. And I have to leave then. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. Please unshare your uh, slides, please. Yes, please. Amit, you allow him to share his presentation. Hello? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, s
हेलो अमित अमित पाटिल डॉक्टर शिवाधर आर यू एबल टू शेयर या देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम इन दिस विंडो आर यू गेटिंग माई वॉइस वॉइस वी आर गेटिंग because and when oh. we are sharing a screen it's uh, difficult to how to share it okay i am trying to contact abit patil please uh, bear with us sir. amit ha uh, uh, please uh, unshare allow him to share dr shivadar sir it is already allowed sir please try now okay let me try okay.